Can you imagine what the American aerospace industry would be without SpaceX? Yes, that would be a time when we still depended on Russia to get to the ISS. It'd be a time when our launch frequency was surpassed by China, and the goal of reaching the moon by 2026 would only be a dream. Many of you would surely agree with me on the importance of SpaceX, but not everyone thinks like you do. Many competing organizations are claiming that SpaceX is disrupting their game. What exactly does this mean? Why do they think this way? How did Elon Musk react to this? Let's find out on today's episode of Alpha Tech. Competition is an indispensable term in every industry. Only through competition can there be development and innovation. It's competition that fosters ambitions we never thought possible. However, let's not forget that to have competition, we must have a standout player, which is the key to stimulating the will and desire to prove oneself. This story is similarly evident in the rocket launch market we see today, where the standout player is none other than SpaceX. SpaceX and Elon Musk have been deeply involved in striving in the rocket launch market for the last 20 years, bringing about a booming era for the entire space industry. As a result, rocket companies in general and startup private enterprises in particular have found motivation to aim for achievements similar to those of SpaceX. For instance, private companies like Blue Origin, Rocket Lab, Stoke Space, and hundreds of rocket manufacturers are competing to find the most cost-effective launch solutions, leading to a reduction in launch costs to just one-fifth of what they were 15 years ago. However, instead of celebrating these positive developments, some individuals hold biased and negative views about SpaceX's efforts. I won't say that such views appear in a certain newspaper, but those who haven't followed SpaceX closely might easily misunderstand SpaceX and Elon Musk in a negative or even a dreadful light upon reading about them. Now, I'm going to clarify these somewhat inaccurate rumors. First, people claim that Elon Musk is increasingly using his immense power and influence to try to block emerging competitors. Completely false. Essentially, Elon Musk is doing his utmost for his noble goal of making humanity a multi-planetary species. He said, quote, We don't use patents except to block patent trolls, so others are free to copy us. SpaceX is building the technology to extend consciousness beyond Earth, so the cost per ton to orbit and beyond must necessarily be low enough to accomplish that goal. Let's look at reality. SpaceX's technology is completely copyable for everybody. But it's astonishing that after nine years of the first Falcon 9 landing, no one else has even attempted to land an operational booster. Therefore, there is no basis to claim that SpaceX and Elon Musk are appropriating the business activities of other companies. The second misconception is that some critics suggest that SpaceX might be selling at a loss. If they were, it'd be illegal, similar to what Amazon was accused of doing with its basics products. However, if SpaceX is not selling at a loss, then competitors have no valid complaints. Peter Beck in the article claims that 5,000 per kilogram is too low and below cost. However, in 2021, the marginal cost of a Falcon 9 landing with an autonomous spaceport drone ship, ASDS, was $18 million. Given that a Starlink launch weighs 17 and a half tons, this amounts to about $1,000 per kilogram. At $5,000 per kilogram, SpaceX only needs four tons of payload to turn a profit. SpaceX maintains a healthy margin on even rideshare missions, which often involve return to launch site RTLS landings, saving a couple million dollars. Elon Musk also talked about this when rumors were of losses, saying none of the rideshare missions have lost money. The 2021 all-in cost was calculated when SpaceX launched at a quarter of their current rate. It wouldn't be surprising if the cost is now $10 million for RTLS and $12 million for ASDS missions. In addition, ride-sharing services have been extremely beneficial for the industry, enabling innovative space programs and increasing launch demand. Next, critics argue SpaceX relies too much on government contracts. However, the space industry originally thrived on government contracts, with commercial aspects being secondary. SpaceX has probably had a higher percentage of commercial launches than any other company in history. They're opening up space to the commercial sector by significantly reducing the cost of access. Moreover, don't think that the government relying on a single provider means that SpaceX will have a monopoly in this aspect. If another company meets the necessary criteria like SpaceX or even exceeds them, the government will still favor them. However, in reality, we can see that in terms of capability and cost, the greatest benefits currently come from SpaceX alone. Many people might say that SpaceX and Elon Musk are paranoid, but it's precisely this constant paranoia that's driven them to keep pushing forward even from a dominant position. All of this success is thanks to Elon and Gwen Shotwell, who inspire every employee with their missions of going to Mars. 
For them, this mission isn't just corporate rhetoric. It's their actual goal, and they align all their efforts towards it. As a result, the Falcon 9 is practically the only operational medium lift vehicle that is the best in the world. While ULA is super late with Vulcan production and launch cadence, this has led to talks of selling to avoid bankruptcy. As for Blue Origin, they've been moving a lot of step-by-step -step and very little ferociously for 23 years. The project seems to be just a vanity endeavor. Ariane Space is somewhat complaining and relying on EU support instead of taking action. And of course, this is from the perspective of a European. Regarding Rocket Lab, the company has indeed made efforts in its reusable rocket project, but it also has to go through the all-too-common difficulties of developing a new vehicle with new engines. So, what is the key to SpaceX's strong position today? And is Elon Musk trying to hide his development secrets? The answer is, of course, no. Elon's not hiding anything. In fact, he shares everything with everyone. I do hope that rocket companies focus on reusability. That's the fundamental breakthrough needed for humanity to become a spacefaring civilization. Falcon's 80% reusable, and the team's doing incredible work launching every two or three days. From here, we can see just how remarkable the Falcon 9's capabilities are. At the heart of SpaceX's rate of success is, is the Falcon 9, which has brought down the cost of reaching space and become a springboard for both the company's wider business and Musk's ultimate goal of getting to Mars. In terms of performance, cost, and reliability, it is truly the most successful rocket ever built. According to Bryce Tech, a space consulting and research company, SpaceX's market share in the global launch market was the biggest in the world in the first quarter of this year. The total number of SpaceX launches equals the total launches of the rest of the world combined. This means that the volume of cargo SpaceX delivers to space is many times greater than that of the other launch organizations. The tactics that turned Falcon 9 into the era's most widely used rocket are now being applied to the Starship. They echo many of the things that also account for the breakout success of Musk's electric car company Tesla. First and foremost has been the success of Musk and SpaceX's chief operating officer. Gwyn Shotwell, at pushing disruptive technologies into mainstream production. In the case of the Falcon 9, that meant using 3D printing for its engines, the most complex part of the rocket, and reusing the main booster for future launches. To master new techniques like these, SpaceX worked on almost every detail of designing and creating its own rockets rather than relying on suppliers, with Musk himself acting as a chief engineer in the early days to goad his team on. SpaceX has also took on the full development risk itself, rather than being able to fall back on guaranteed payments from NASA, forcing much greater financial discipline. As a result, the space agency estimates that the $400 million SpaceX spent to develop the Falcon 9 rocket was 10 times lower than the likely cost of a rocket built under traditional government contracting. Another advantage SpaceX shares with Tesla is its ability to access cheap capital thanks to high-valued investors who are always willing to invest in their business operations. Most rivals have to generate cash from their existing businesses to fund new ventures, says Steve Collar, chief executive of satellite company SES. The ease with which SpaceX has been able to tap investors has opened the way for it to take much bigger risks, he adds. One result of the ample cash, along with the company's access to its own launch service, has been Starlink, which has beaten would-be rivals like OneWeb and Amazon's Kuiper to launch its broadband service. Racing to be first has involved technical gambles with its satellite designs, and Starlink is already on its third generation of technology. But even if it ends up writing off billions of dollars worth of satellites on the way to perfecting its constellation, the setback would not hurt the company the way it would a rival without access to such cheap capital, says Collar. In summary, SpaceX's dominance in the rocket launch market is undeniable, but rumors about them trying to crush emerging competitors, that's entirely false. They bring economic growth to the industry, and they provide the motivations that expand space exploration, and that's truly commendable. Ultimately, Elon Musk's goal is Mars, and the Falcon 9 is merely the first step towards a more powerful, gigantic launch vehicle, Starship. In just a few days, the fourth launch of Starship will take place. Get ready to witness this amazing performance. That's all for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching, and see you next time.